Okay, so our last presentation today is from another student of mine who I've had the pleasure of working with uh, starting last spring. She was in my Bio 150 class, did an honors module project on epigenetics and PTSD, um, and then continued with me this summer um, working on the same project with CRISPR, actually a different CRISPR strategy than what Daniel presented before. Um, so I'm pleased to present my student, Phoenix Bryant. She's a uh, second year early college for biological sciences student at Tacoma Park, Phoenix. So I did my project also on CRISPR. I just used a different type of CRISPR called CRISPR-Off instead of CRISPR-Cas9. And the gene that I was targeting was FKBP5, specifically the intron 7. Oh, it's wrong. And so I got to this project by my last project last year that I did for biology, where I looked at how trauma can be passed down from parents to children biologically. So the epigenetic transmission of that trauma. So basically what I found out was that the life experience of the parent results in these epigenetic markers on their DNA, and then those then get passed down to their children that affect their children's phenotypes as well. Um, and while I was researching this, uh, genes in the stress pathway kept being mentioned, one of the important ones being FK506 binding protein 5 uh, or FKBP5. So FKBP5 is a co-chaperone of the glucocorticoid receptor, which is the thing that sort of accepts corticoid, corticoids like cortisol. And both post-traumatic stress, stress disorder and uh, intergenerational effects have been linked to FKBP5, as well as its expression has been shown to be affected in both major depressive disorder and PTSD. So I have a little example here uh, of basically like how it would sort of work. So methylation is one of the like mechanisms of epigenetics. And so if you demethylate FKBP5, that leads to an increased expression of the gene. And then that means that the glucocorticoid receptor gets inhibited. And then the HPA axis ends up producing more cortisol because they have this sort of um, like feedback transmission that they do that like make sure that, they're, that your body's working right. And when something's disrupted, it sort of goes a little bit haywire. So this right here is the HPA axis. And so basically it's that like hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and then the adrenal glands. And then those are what produces the cortisol. So you might not know exactly what epigenetics is. So basically when you hear it, you think of genetics, but it isn't exactly just your DNA strand. It's how your DNA strand gets affected by environmental and your behavioral factors. So there are a bunch of different mechanisms. The important one is DNA methylation, which is when a methyl group, like these little guys, attaches to your DNA, and then that can affect how your DNA is read and your phenotype. So one of the most important like influential studies that I saw was by um, the research group led by uh, Yehuda. And so basically it was this study on Holocaust survivors and their children. And they looked at FKBP5 methylation, specifically in intron 7, because that's where they found it to be the most different of Holocaust survivors and their children, and then compared it to a very similar uh, control group. And so basically what they found was that there, there was increased methylation of FKBP5 in the Holocaust parents, and then that led to decreased cortisol. And then there was decreased methylation in the Holocaust children compared to the control group. This is all compared to the control group. Um, and then increased cortisol in the Holocaust children. And this increased cortisol could lead to psychopathologies like PTSD and anxiety and depression. But basically the idea was is that the life experiences of the parents who went through the Holocaust went on to their children. So maybe if their children were born in that same sort of environment, they would maybe have a better chance at surviving. So for this summer, 
I looked uh, for a CRISPR strategy to edit the methylation of FKBP5 in Tron7, and then created a PCR strategy to look for correct editing. And then I also explored future possibilities for using CRISPR as a treatment for PTSD. So my specific CRISPR strategy uses something called CRISPR-OFF, which is similar to CRISPR-Cas9, except instead of using a regular Cas9, it uses a DCAS9, which does not cut the actual genome. And then it brings this uh, DNA methyltransferase into the target gene to methylate that specific part that the, signal, uh, the single guide RNA leads it to. So I wanted to find this single guide RNA, the sgRNA, for my project. And then I decided to do it for rats um, because in humans it's sort of more complicated. And then there's also lots of stuff that I want to do with this specific implementation to study. And if I did it in humans, it would lead to some interesting ethical questions, which <laughs> I don't want to deal with. Um, so basically what I did was I used NCBI BLAST to find the equivalent of the FKBP5 intron 7 in humans into the rat version to find out where it was. And then using a technology called eCRISP, I found the sgRNA sequences that I could use and I found one that I really liked. So this is the NCBI BLAST results. And so basically all of the nucleotides that have a line in between them that means that they are the same. So it basically had a very high similarity between the two, um, between like the two, um, what, like the two species, the humans and rats. Um, so the query is the human FKBP5, and then the subject is the rat genome. So you can see all the similarities and how they're like conserved so well. So this is actually from the Yehuda paper, and it shows the human FKBP5 intron 7 that she used. And this is basically her PCR strategy. So her PCR primers are in blue, and then she also has highlighted the, CP, the CPG sites, which stands for the two like nucleotides, uh, cytosine and guanine. And basically that is where the methyl group usually attaches when something gets methylated. And then she also included the GREs, which stands for glucocorticoid response elements. And basically the glucocorticoid receptor would bind to those areas and decide whether to express the DNA or not. And then this was mine that I did based on that same figure where I showed the PCR primers that I chose in blue. And then I also highlighted the two GREs that I found in mine and then also the six CPG sites and then highlighted in yellow was the sgRNA that I found. So for my PCR strategy, I just basically took two ends at both ends of my uh, DNA sequence for the PCR primers. And then I, use, uh, I would use sodium bisulfite sequencing to look at the methylation if I were to do that, this in actual rats. And so, Basically how it works is that if the, you do, you do the sodium bisulfite sequencing and then if the cytosine turns into a thymine, that means that it wasn't methylated. But if the cytosine stays a cytosine, then that means that it was methylated. And you basically compare both sequences to what it was to see that. And so this is what I want to do in the future with what I did this summer, hopefully, or someone at least to do it. Um, so basically, I want to do a PTSD rat model, which I found one that was really good that had, that was by a group, a woman uh, named Kaluchi. And so basically, I'll show you her, uh, like, experimental design. So basically, like, they shock these rats to give them <laughs> traumatic experiences, I guess. And then they put them into social isolation to sort of mimic what PTSD would do. Um, and then they looked at how it was expressed in how they behaved. 
So this is the different parameters that they used to see how they sort of reacted to this trauma. So there was high responders, normal responders, and low responders. And so basically they looked at how much time they spent freezing in this big box that they did. Um, and then how much time they spent interacting with other rats. And then also how much they basically like moved inside of the box to see how like the PTSD manifested in the rats. And then also I wanna see if, because this isn't that research, they don't know exactly what causes PTSD. So I was wondering if FKBP5 methylation is what maybe causes PTSD. And to do that, I would do this rat zygote type of study where you mate two normal rats, you extract the zygote, and then you inject it with the concoction that you made. And then you put it into a surrogate female, and then the rats get born, and then you'd basically see if they have PTSD or not. You'd use actually CRISPR on for this because you'd have to demethylate the FKBP5 instead of methylating it to see. And this is the ethical question that I was like, I don't want to do that in humans. That'd be very bad. <laughs> and these are my references.